What is Teobroma cacao? The chocolate tree. Worshipped by the Mayan and the Aztecs as the trees of old trees, Teobroma cacao has been through two millenniums a gift from the Mayan god Quetzalcoatl to the human race, a currency, a revered spirit from the rainforest, an exquisite beverage, an ethnomedicine, a bonbon, a spiritual elixir, a butter, and more recently, a means of oppression, a multi-billion dollar industry, and the star of a bunch of awesome movies such as Chocola, Water Like Chocolate, and Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. But at the dawn of the 21st century, Teobroma cacao could very well be the most friendly and effective crop to respond to the challenge of climate change and human development in the rainforest. Let's create a new world for cacao and chocolate. It is time to take our ethic to our mouth. A multitude of small-scale farms dispersed through the Mesoamerican forest represent the cacao production for the province of Bocas del Toro, Panama. Most of the region's cacao production is under the care of the primary inhabitants of the forest, its indigenous people. 95% of Panama's indigenous population live in extreme poverty, and 80% live in rural areas. Agriculture, if not always the economy of choice, is the economy of need and tradition. Beyond the joy of opening a chocolate box or grabbing your favorite chocolate bars at the store, there is men and women dedicating their life to produce cacao. They live in luscious, tropical forests around the globe, making a living with their ancestral knowledge on their ancestral land. In Bocas del Toro, a cacao farm size is on an average 40 acres and barely filled a family of 10. If an integrated agricultural system in the rainforest provides food for a family, cacao production in itself does not provide for a decent living due to the low prices of cacao beans trade on the marketplace. In your $4 chocolate bars, only 3 cents go to the cacao producer. Following harvest, the cacao beans take 4 to 5 days to ferment under constant watch. And in an equatorial environment such as Bocas, the drying process can take up to 7 days with a twice a day main labor interaction. It is what we call a labor intensive process. As a consumer, we must know where the cacao in our favorite chocolate comes from. The partnerships between chocolate makers and cacao producers or cacao cooperatives is the only way small cacao farmer can earn a decent wage from their production stay on their ancestral lands and keep doing what they have done for millenniums, being the best and rightful guardian of the rainforest. The best cacao grows in small lots under the canopy of the world's tropical and equatorial rainforest. A chocolate tree takes from four to five years to bear fruits and thrive under the shadow of what we call Las Madres de Cacao. They are usually the giants of the rainforest prized for their lumber and precious wood. Or they are a range of fruit and nut trees, distinctly edible by the inhabitants of the forest or its fauna. An integrated cacao farm in a rainforest is a symbiotic and productive operation. It is a gradient universe comprising four levels. Let me explain to you how the rainforest canopy functions in agriculture, from top to bottom. First come the giant of the rainforest that can shoot up toward the sky at a mighty 130 feet tall. They offer an endless habitat for the local fauna and flora. Their canopy nutrients trickle down like magical supplements to feed the lower level species. Their roots are a wave of sensory limb intertwined with other of the planet kingdom, sending 
sensorial vibration, nutrient, and creating an effective habitat for microbiomes and worms alike. The second level involve fruit and lumber trees. In an integrated agricultural system, they create a big amount of the biodiversity of a secondary rainforest. They are often referred as la madres de cacao and provide low shade and nutrient to Teobroma cacao. On the third level, you will find the common food plants in a tropical forest that make up a third of the rainforest population diet. Those are filed in a category of planting, bananas, jackfruit, breadfruit, and such. And to conclude, the fourth level gazes under its wing the tubers family and a wide range of ethnomedicinal plants. This wholesome ecosystem makes a cacao farm. Small-scale farming under the canopy of a secondary forest is the most responsible answer to tropical forest degradation. Well-managed food result charge, such as Teobroma cacao, actually put back nutrients into mostly nutrient-laced soil due to the rainforest rapid decay cycle for the benefit of all of the food plants in its proximity. Forest biomass stores close to 80% of all the biomass on Earth. Teobroma cacao is a perennial crop that offers a large amount of benefit. Perennials have deeper and larger roots networks designed to retain water and soil. The cacao tree ecosystem lessens erosion, floods, and keep soil nutrient and water on the farm for the benefit of all other crops at its periphery. Perennial crops such as cacao facilitate the injection of organic matter into the soils, helping them to keep more water and nutrients. From a carbon sequestration perspective, perennial crops such as Teobroma cacao increase terrestrial carbon storage by extracting carbon from the atmosphere and storing it in plant biomass. Cacao production too reduces increases in carbon in the atmosphere that come from other sources. In the remote area of Bocas del Toro, cacao production is also a woman practice. Most Nabe indigenous women inherit cacao farm by cultural tradition. Because they can't make a decent living of their land, most Nabi men must find work outside their communities. Women will stay on the farm as the sole provider of the household. Cacao crop calls for transformation and it is a great produce for added value, therefore giving an extra economic incentive for indigenous women. The spirit of cacao in most indigenous cosmovision and in the Nabis is female. Women have a natural inclination to produce cacao. Increasing our help toward female cacao producer gives us the opportunity to take part in an agricultural practice with social justice. Bocas del Toro must recognize the rightful place of women cacao producer in the marketplace in order to rebalance gender equality at a social, economic and environmental level. Purchasing women cacao crop is participating in their economic development, but also in their educational emancipation. We need female agro-engineers in the field of cacao production. Integrated agriculture in the rainforest and its cacao production practices help to meet the need for a fairer indigenous and women development. This practice drives to preserve the rainforest as well as to support a healthy and holistic human development. This integrated approach at the arts of the cacao and chocolate industry will give our personal chocolate conception a better taste. From the jungle of Bocas del Toro, Panama, we are globally calling on all actors in cacao and chocolate production as well as on you chocolate consumer to occupy 
our responsibility to save and respect our planet, tropical and equatorial forest, and to place its indigenous people as the legitimate guardian of the rainforest. Thank you.